I want to talk about a subject that um, people have been interested in for quite a long time and have asked me a lot of questions in the past, but I didn't feel there was a need to speak much about it. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about it, but uh, not too much because it's not really necessary for the ordinary layperson. And what I'm going to talk about is transes, T-R-A-N-C-E-S, transes. Now, transes is not a phenomenon that belongs to any um, country, religion, or culture. All cultures, all religions, all countries, from time immemorial, have witnessed people take trances. Now, true to observation, some are not real trances, some are people trying to get attention. Some are some type of mental health disorder, where they have different types of personalities. Some are just for attention, but some are definitely real. Now, what a trance is, is we have passageways through our, our body. Those passageways in Tibetan we call tsa. And in Chinese, it is something like where the qi flows. Okay? And we basically have 72,000 channels throughout our body that goes from the bottom of our toes to the top of our head. And they intersect at different points, such as the crown, the forehead, the throat, the heart, the navel, and the secret area. When they intersect at that place, these veins or these passageways, they're called chakras. Chakras are always depicted as lotuses, 64 petal, 34 petal, 32 petal, etc., etc. And they're, they're depicted as lotuses, but they're not actually lotuses. They actually are wind channels that converge there and they wrap around each other or they go around each other a certain amount of times, like 32 times, 64 times. And they're kind of knotted up. So those are represented by um, lotus petals, or we call them chakras. So what happens is when a person takes trance, a certain level of these chakras are open, either by force, by meditation, by good way or bad way. A bad way is when a spirit takes trance of you. So what happens is that um, these passageways are occupied <coughs> by another being. Now what happens to the actual being is speculative. Some people believe that the actual, we, the person, uh, that belong, the person that owns the body leaves the body temporarily or is in another part of the body and another being comes and takes over. Okay. So what happens is this is, um, we don't need to dwell on that because different trances have different types of, uh, outcomes. In a higher trances, the person's consciousness leaves and abides somewhere like in a ring a person may wear. All right. Now, in the lower trances, they occur for many reasons. They occur because a ethereal being, you can call it a spirit for convenience sake, uh, wants to communicate. So they enter your body and they use your vocal cords. They use your body to see, to hear, to taste, to touch, to think, to smoke cigarettes sometimes, to feel. They use your body because they don't have a body they cannot feel. They can only perceive. Sometimes they enter you because they're mischievous. Sometimes they enter you because they want revenge. Sometimes they enter you is because just because you're around and it's convenient. Sometimes they enter you because they want to get someone back. So they use you because you're close to that person. And the kind of beings enter you also vary. The beings that enter you can be high level beings, low level beings, mischievous beings, good beings, bad beings. Um, evil beings, mediocre beings. There are many types that take trance of us. What types of beings that take trance of us also makes a difference in our trance? Sometimes when we take trance, when these beings enter, if they're malevolent or they're not nice ones, for years and years and years and years and years, they can show themselves as very nice, very kind, very generous, and very accurate. And then once they get you in their hold, once they have you in your confidence, they can turn and make you do things. Because they're, you know, they, they live hundreds and hundreds of years and they're very patient. So in order to convince you to get you to do whatever they want, they can take years, even decades, to really do inverted commas, helpful things. 
things that you think that really benefit you, but in the end, it actually harms you. So what's important is this, is um, what is taking trance of the person? Devas, nature spirits, land deities, people who have passed away, spirits, ferocious beings, disembodied beings, all these types of beings can take trance of a person. Now the person taking trance, A, can be willing, can be not willing, can be at the wrong place at the right time, and they get it. Some, they actually ask for it. Now what's important is this is that when these kind of beings take trance in us, some of them are benevolent and helpful. They can heal, they can tell you the future, they can give you some advice that will help, they can. They can take trance, they can do that. There are benevolent beings. Not all beings who take trance, or not all beings that take trance of people are necessarily bad. Some are quite benevolent and some are quite nice, all right? Now, that's for lower level trance. For higher level trance, a trance of an actual high being, Example, a Dharma protector, such as Setra, all right? Those are much more harder to take trance with, all right? When you're going to take trance of a Dharma protector, such as Setra, you need a lot of training. A, sometimes we have spontaneous trances, and the Dharma protector chooses us to enter us and talk. Sometimes we propitiate them and then they enter us. Whatever it is, whether they enter us spontaneously or they enter us because we requested them, our body still needs to be prepared. One thing I need to tell everyone, none of my students should be taking trance. None of my friends should be taking trance. I have authorized no one to take any trance. I have given permission to no one to give trance, and I have asked no protector to take trance of anyone. I prefer everyone to study Dharma, practice the six paramitas, be kind, practice the eight verses of thought transformation, the wheel of sharp weapons, and study the Lamrim to become a best person. The best trance we can take is if we become, we take trance of compassion. We take trance of love and forgiveness and and kindness, that's the best trance we can take. So none of my students in this country or any other country should be taking trance, should be able to take trance, and I will not know about it. That would be difficult, all right? So if we are to take trance of a high level being like Setrap, either he chooses us and then we go for a Lama for training, we have to get our Lama's permission for training, or the Lama chooses someone, and that person goes for training. Now, whether you're chosen to go for training or the Lama chooses you for training, the secret is you have to go for training. This is the basic, fundamental, rudimentary training that you need to go for before you become a trancer, an oracle, okay? A vehicle for something high to speak through. A, you need to have refuge. Refuge protects you from all the negative beings that may potentially take trance and harm you. Number two, you need to go for a tako. A tako is a special ritual done by a qualified lama that opens up your chakra so that beings can enter you, protect, uh, higher beings can enter you, lower beings cannot. After you do that, then the lama will give you Lama Tsongkhapa's empowerment and you will do a Lama Tsongkhapa retreat. The retreat you need to do will take about a month to a month and a half to two months where you do the meditations of Lama Tsongkhapa combined with Lama Chopa. So you do a Lama Chopa, which is Guru Puja, combined with Lama Tsongkhapa's practice with offerings and tarmas every single day. And then you need to do Lama Tsongkhapa's mantra. Simply to do Lama Tsongkhapa's mantra will not be um, fulfill the requirement. So what we need to do is we need to receive Lama Tsongkhapa's <coughs> initiation from a from our qualified teacher, not from just anywhere. After receiving the initiation, we need to enter a retreat. After you have finished that, then you will go to your teacher. You can either go for a 
Yamataka initiation or Hayagriva initiation. If you do Yamataka, Yamataka is of course Wisdom Manjushri. If you do that very well, you will extend your life. You will remove all interferences. Spirits and demons and ghosts and scary makers and crazy makers and all that cannot disturb you, cannot come near you with Yamataka. No way. All right? On top of that, your winds, your channels, your drops, your chakras will be highly, highly charged and highly blessed, cleaned. It's like sending someone to clean the road, ready for the king to come. So if a king is coming, a prime minister is coming, you're going to clean the road, put up banners and, and all that, isn't it? So you're going to clean, it's like cleaning your inner roads out. After that is done, then you go for your lama to observe whether the retreat was effective or you should enter retreat again. Some people can enter retreat again. After you finish with a Yamataka or Hayagriva retreats, then you need to get the initiation of Setra and do Setra's retreat. And then when you're done with that, in between the Lama will do Chaptru. Chaptru is a ritual to clean your psychic winds, clean your psychic energy, clean your psychic nerves. The Lama will bless you and observe you and watch you. Okay? And uh, in between that, the Lama will call you to take some mini trances to see if you can take trances already. He'll call the, un he'll call Setra. Sometimes Setra will come for a few seconds and leave, but most likely the entourage will come first. Usually the entourage of Setra will come first, the lower entourages. The lower entourages come and visit, say hello, move around a little bit, then they leave. Then the next set of entourages, the next level come, the next level. Just like before the Prime Minister comes, you contact the lower PAs. Then they contact the upper PAs, then they contact the actual PA. The actual PA comes and scouts and wreckies the place. Then the Prime Minister comes, all right? The Prime Minister doesn't come and sweep the road and recce himself, all right? So therefore, the lower entourages will come to your body to recce <laughs> the place. But what they're doing is they're cleaning your body further to prepare for the king, all right? If your body is not prepared and the retreats are not done well, it will be a very, very, very excruciating, painful experience. Why? Because Setrap's energy is like fire coming in and going through and it's very, it's like this. If the road is filled with rocks and stones and wood and all kinds of debris and potholes, when the prime minister comes in his car, it's going to be very painful, isn't it? Why? The car is going to be jumping up and down. So therefore, it's likened to cleaning the road. Now, this retreat process can be combined again with extra. Some people need extra practices. Sometimes they need extra Yamantaka. Sometimes they do, need to do extra Hayagriva. Some need to do more extra Vajrapani practices. Some oracles take up to five years to train. They do the pujas over and over and over again. They do the rituals and meditations over to clean their body. All right? And... When they're taking trance, they never, ever do it unsupervised. They never, ever do it unsupervised without the Lama, whatever. Why? Because if they do, don't do it well, the wrong thing might enter and pretend it's set up. And then you're going to fall for it, okay? So what happens is uh, it's a long procedure. It's a complicated procedure, but it's a procedure to safeguard your body from harm and interferences. So not simply anybody should take trance, or anybody can take trance. Now, how much you need to do, how long you need to do will be strictly up to the Lama. All right? And when you do take trance, each time you need to have the permission of your Lama. The actual oracle should have a written letter, these days should have a written letter signed and sealed by the Lama authorizing the person to take trance. Anyone without a sign and seal letter from the, the Lama to do trance is not authorized, therefore their trance can be doubtful.